it was around Halloween time and I was strolling through, um, I think it was um, Kamishovo as a freshborn. And there's a guy in a house and the house is dark and he's wearing this clown mask. Oh my and God. He's got, a glow, he's got a glow stick and he's like, you know, starts talking to me and he convinces me to come inside <laughs> and then he takes me hostage. And it was absolutely terrifying. And I like, I don't like clowns. I don't like anything <laughs> scary. I'm a big wimp. So I'm sat there like shaking and shivering and, you know, absolutely terrified. And then eventually he just killed himself in front of me. It was the bizarrest oh and God. weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Welcome to Tardux, a podcast for content creators to come share their experiences, stories, and advice. And today, I have Ariana. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Excellent. All right, so what we normally do to start off the pod is we do three quick questions just to get the juices flowing. So are you ready? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, so if you could sit with anybody in the world and have a cup of coffee in history, all over history, who would, you, who would that person be? Leonard Nimoy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah, without okay. a doubt. What was for supper last night? Question number two. Oh, God. Uh, what did we have last night? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> pasta. It was definitely pasta, yeah. Chorizo pasta. Okay. And now, do you guys call it supper or dinner? Dinner. Okay. Yeah, right. it's definitely dinner, yeah. Yes. Where I'm from in Newfoundland, we call it supper. So it's just it's funny how where <laughs> I live in Connecticut now and they call it dinner. So it's just like. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now since today is Star Trek Day, what is your favorite Star Trek movie? Ooh, Wrath of Khan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, <laughs> we got that done. That's out of the way. So you are described as a Twitch streamer. A uh, nerd, daisy addict, wife, mother, and creator of Queens, Queens of the Castle. That's yes. all awesome but, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I try. So, and you're from, you're in the, U, uh, in the UK, correct? Yes, that's correct, yeah. All right. So where did things get started? Oh, actually, no. First of all, I saw pictures of your wedding. Um, yes. How, that, those pictures looked amazing. <laughs> it Thank looked like you. a storybook wedding. Oh, it was. It was beautiful. Thank you. Did the day they went smooth? Uh, yeah, I had a few hiccups, but yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah, good. definitely. Well, you know, really, the only people that know if things don't go wrong are really typically, you know, yourself and your husband. Yeah, just just me. Yeah, it was only me. It was definitely just me. No one else noticed. <laughs> oh, and did the weather behave? Uh, it rained in the morning, but it settled by the afternoon, so it was fine. Oh, excellent. it all worked out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. And now, did you guys get married at a castle? No, no, that was just like a, how do you say, like a show, I guess, because okay. you, can't, you can't, can't legally get married there. So. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks fantastic. It was beautiful. Uh, all right. So before you went, started streaming and whatnot, what, what did you do beforehand? What's your past? Well, but, but I didn't really start streaming until I became a mom. Yeah. So that was like, what, six years ago? Oh, wow. Uh, but. Yeah, so before that, I was just working full time, just a standard, you know, I was working in a call center. I was like, yeah. just, just gamed in my spare time, you know, that sort of thing. And then I became a mom and I was like, kind of stuck at home and mm -hmm. didn't really have things to do. So, and I found streaming and Twitch and that was where that all started. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah. Holy it's quite cow. a yeah, quite, quite boring jobs before that, just like waitressing <laughs> and like yeah. call centers and, you know, just like the average Joe kind of job, you know. So, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that I became a mom and that was where it all began. So, oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And now when did video games start for you before you became a mom? Did you play? Oh, games? yeah. When I was a child. Yeah. Okay. From, very, from a very young age. So uh, consoles and, and PCs. My, my dad used to build them. So yeah, we were around them quite a lot. And obviously he, he gamed himself. So, you know, we grew up, we grew up as gamers. All of us did really. So, oh, that's awesome. What were some of the uh, your favorite early games? I was a big Tomb Raider fan when I was a kid. Yeah. Tomb Raider, Lara Croft was just like my hero. So <laughs> um, a lot of those kind of games. And um, yeah, um, just stupid like GTA and, you know, like I used to love Simpsons Home Run. I think I played that for hours on end, you know. So 
Um, but yeah, and Age of Empires is one of my biggest ones. So I used to play that with my parents. That was yeah. quite cool. Oh, no way. Um, yeah, so I've got, yeah. But um, but as I've been growing up, obviously, I've developed other sort of uh, interests in gaming, like Skyrim and uh, Oblivion and all those sort of games. Yeah. Big, big things of mine that I played a lot. So when I started streaming, that was what I started out on Skyrim. Okay. But, um, and and Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Know, those were the first two games I started streaming, and then I found Days, the love for Daisy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not stopped. It's no? just continued from there. It's just spiraled. I haven't played any of the games since, really. Oh, that's so, so cool. yeah. Um, Excellent. And now the uh, I love the story that you know you the whole family was gaming. So I'm yes. a lot older than you probably. So we didn't have <laughs> my parents didn't have video games, but. I've embraced that with my own children. We've yes. had, you know, when my son was, I think it was seventh birthday, we had probably eight computers around the table all playing Minecraft. That was his That's birthday. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and it's so cool being able to, you know, share that with your children. Like our first video game we played with my son and my, my daughter was uh, Star Wars Lego. That's That was the first start for them. And then Minecraft has been a stable through the house, for, or a staple through the house from eight till 20 for them. So, you know, it's just, yeah. like, just one of those games. So, yeah, when your kids get a little older, I'm sure, you know. Well, my son is it's six. We got him a, uh, his first computer at Christmas, just gone. Yeah. Uh, and he's got Minecraft and he's obsessed. Absolutely, oh. obs absolutely obsessed. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know how it is. Yeah, um, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's amazing to see them, you know, get into it and then, you know, like Minecraft, to see what they make and, and yeah. you know, the imagination. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I have a sh I share this story often with our friends who play Minecraft. So we had a server at one point and my my son's friend, best friend, they're playing Minecraft. We have, you know, other kids, other parents are playing on it. I get a call from my son's uh, friend's mom who said, Barry, did... Um, your son blow up my daughter's house? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So then, yeah, it's like Lord of the Flies came in and everybody started like, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was amazing to see how civilization just collapses. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so now, over the years, your all-time favorite game, I assume, is Daisy at this point. Yes, yeah, it hands down wins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my Lord. There's, no, there's just no other game like it, you yeah. know. Um, in all the all the years I've been playing video games, I never found anything that just hooked, line and synced to me like Daisy did, you know. Um, now, what a, what is it? Has, what is, I guess, what hook does it have on you that just keeps keeps you You there? can't explain it because every, every adventure is different, I think. Like, yeah. no matter what you do, like, even if you could run the same path 50 times, yeah. every time something different can happen, you know. Yeah. It just has an originality that I don't think any any other video game can capture in the same way. Yeah. And even after nine years of playing it, it still makes my heart beat out of my <laughs> chest when I run into someone, you know? Yeah. Um, now, how did yeah. you find it? What was your path to it? So I used to play Armour. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously the, where it came from. It was built upon. It's a mod that was created and then made a standalone game from it. So yeah. I used to play Armour and it was recommended to me on Steam, of course, because, you know, I've got games in common. Yeah. Uh, and that was just it. I just, you know, opened it, you know, bought it, opened it, played it, and then that was it. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history. Oh. And now, you know, that's a long time to play that game. How what? How much has improved over the years? Like it was oh, rough, um, probably the early years. It is a, a completely entirely different game than what it was when it was first released. Yeah. It's um, graphically, you know, just the elements of it, the the you know nitty gritty like health system and everything's mm -hmm. just completely been revamped. So it's completely changed. Yeah, and it's still changing now, even with every update. So. Um, yeah, I still don't know everything, even <laughs> like I consider myself a noob in comparison to some people that play oh it because I, there's, there is people out there that have got tens and thousands of hours, you know, so. And the other aspect of the two, it's, it's, it's very positive modding community that's built, you know, that has built yeah. things for too. Yeah, I think the modding kind of saved Daisy mm -hmm. in a way because um, there was a time when it was like the player base was like 4,000 people and it was like really dying and the, yeah. the, the streaming side of things were dying. You know, the community was kind of falling apart. And then they released a big, really big patch and modding came into effect and the modding community just like wowed us with new maps and, yeah. you know, items and all sorts of different things. And, and it really, really did bring a whole new audience to the game. Yeah, I mean, it really did help with its revival, you know. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, because I've had a lot of content creators who come who have come on, and their early game streaming was Daisy, and 
I, I've always wanted to jump into it because I just I've heard so many good stories about it. But you know, part of me is like I think I've missed that window. Yeah. But I just recently started playing it. I don't. There's so much to this game still. Like, and there's still more to come. That's yeah. the the crazy thing about it is it's still in development. Um, and yeah. There's still more to to see. So. Yeah, I think last week there was a development uh, or dev stream that went out. Did you watch that? I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, that was about the Livonia update and all the new things to come with the Livonia map. Yeah. Because that is lacking out of the two that they have. Yeah. Okay, because I was going to ask you. So, I've, you know, I've had Livonia in my wish list for a year at least. And I'm like, but I, ha I haven't even played the game at this point. So I was like, you know, what is, uh, you know, Livonia is just another map? Yes, it's just another map. Yeah, so... Daisy themselves have the main map, Chinaris, which is uh, their only, well, there was their only map until a few years ago. They re released Livonia. And then obviously every other map is done by the modding community. Yeah. Um, Livonia has been out about three years, I'm going to say now. Might be wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, it, it needs a lot of work, I think. It, it didn't really take off, I think, how they expected yeah. it to. Um, so they've they've been doing some updates on it. It looks exciting. It looks promising that yeah. they might make good changes. So, yeah. What is so different? Is there a big difference in the map, and how come people didn't gravitate to it? The size, I think, is one of the things. Shinaris is absolutely massive. Yeah. It's it's a ridiculously sized big map, and also the there was a lot of open space in Livonia, and I think people wanted more mm -hmm. in it. If you know what I mean, um, they wanted um, more substance to yeah. it. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot really, uh -huh. and I felt like when I played it, I just felt like I was walking in the forest for like four hours, and I wasn't finding anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Where is everything?" Yeah, so well, I think that's part of the knock. Sometimes the game gets it's, it's a walking small. simulator. Yes, we do describe it as that a lot because there is a lot of walking involved. Yeah. But that's the whole fun in it because what happens along the way, you know, right. yeah. that's what I think makes it so special. Is that, like I say, every time you load up your computer, you don't know what the hell you're in for. Yeah. You know, so, and sometimes nothing happens and that can be boring yeah. to some people. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you run for five hours and you don't see a soul, but then you could run for two hours and see 40 people, you know, so yeah. it just, it, it, every day is different. And that's what I love about Daisy. Oh. Now, um, what, what's been the hardest thing to learn when you jump into the game? For somebody new, I would say like the 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 curve from going from the coast to get, getting inland without dying of starvation or yeah. um, the zombies. I mean, if you don't know how to like fight them, they can be you know quite difficult. So um, I remember when they did the big patch a few years ago, and it was like going from one game to a completely different game. Mm -hmm. And even I struggled for like four or five weeks. So I was like, I don't know if I can play this game anymore. I keep dying oh. on the coast. I can't get like a character building or anything because I just kept dying yeah. over and over again. Um, but once you start to learn like little tricks and things, you know, you pick up like bits and pieces and then it still starts to come together and okay. you don't die anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, a question for you, because I've, like I said, I've just, I've put probably more hours into the game now this in the last two weeks and I've had the three years I've owned it. Yeah. What do you do at night? Like if you're just starting out, I'm pretty reckless, I guess. Like I'll run through a forest with a with a torch or a you yeah. know a glow stick or whatever. Um, obviously night vision if you're geared, but yeah. you know you've got to be able to get to that sort of level of uh, gear first. Um, but yeah, I, or I, I tend to make a fire in a house and chill and cook some meat, like or sit in a forest and make a fire and, oh, and nice. cook some some meat and stuff, you know. Um, or yeah, like I say, just run recklessly through <laughs> through the streets with a light, like yeah. you've got no care in the world, you know. It, um, Depends how how ballsy you are, I suppose. Yeah, and now what like what is your strategy when you approach a new raid or a new you know adventure? What is your what are your first things you like to do, and how do, you know what is your play style? I am like I don't really have like a specific play style. Like some people call themselves like bandits and heroes, and you know all these yeah. silly little names and things. And I just say I do what I have to do. When I play Daisy, yeah. so like I, I will, you know, attack someone if they attack me, but I'm generally quite a friendly player and I try to help people. Mm -hmm. It often gets me murdered, but that's, <laughs> you know, part of the game. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like, like a good fish in, in Daisy. So I tend to, when I first start out, try and find things to get a fishing rod and, and go for a little fish and then yeah. cook my food and then go on cross country adventures and, and see what happens. You know, um, I do play very much like a hunter sort of mm -hmm. so, Play style, if you say, if you're going to pick any of them, um, you're hunter gatherer type person. And I try, try to avoid PvP because I'm not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But then I do sometimes feel a bit ballsy and, and go, but I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not very good at it at all. I t- tend to die a lot and generally I'm the first one to die if I'm in a team. Because <laughs> I'm standing in the middle of the road, stood up looking like, you know, not moving while yeah. someone's taking a shot on my head. So, but yeah. Well, that really brings me to the next question. Playing as, a, you know, playing solo or versus a team, which do you prefer? I prefer being in a team mm-hmm. because I'm more confident. Yeah. But I do generally play solo because I have a very unique play style and I think it might be quite boring for some people Yeah, because of the way I play Daisy. Um, a lot of people are just kind of wanting the action, whereas I like the journey, Yeah, you know, um, and I like and I like to play like more hardcore survival servers because it makes it a more of a harder journey to, you know, to go across the map and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I do prefer being in a team because I don't I do kick ass a bit more <laughs> than I do if I'm on my own because someone's watching my back. You know? Yeah. So, but actually, you know, if I had um, I had a conversation with Deadly Slob once about, you know, streaming when he's playing with other people as a team or whatnot. And he finds that when he's playing with other team, he's he doesn't engage in his chat like uh, as if he's just, you know, solo, like it's a it's a story stream and I'm just interacting with chat while I'm playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, I do find that like because I do have like weekly collabs and I do find that those nights I do interact less with the chat. Um, and that's what I like about Daisy, though, is the kind of game that you could have a lot of downtime because of all the running and stuff. So it's yeah. a perfect streaming game for that, for talking and communicating with chat with the yeah. chat. It is good for that. Oh, cool. And now what, you know, what is something that you're looking forward to out of that you've heard for them to add into the game? I am honestly really out of touch at the minute. I'll be perfectly honest <laughs> with you. I've been so crazy busy. Yeah. Obviously with the event and the wedding and stuff. So I actually haven't read the like last three stats reports. I'll be perfectly honest <laughs> with you. But I'm hoping one day they'll bring back the bow because we used to have a bow, a oh, wooden okay. bow that you could craft in the game mm-hmm. um, back in the original game before the updates. And I'm really hoping one day they bring it back because it was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as, as to what they've like sneak peeked, I honestly couldn't tell you. Yeah, um, yeah. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And so, besides the bow, what is something you would like to see them add? Are there some Ooh. other things you would like? If you had, you know, if you had their ears right now and say, okay, you know what, you need to add this. I would love to see this. Well, a few years ago, actually, I put it forward to them. Um, it was to be able to like hug and interact with other characters in a in a way like that. Because yeah. sometimes you meet strangers in the game and you'll go on like a five hour adventure with them and you'll have to log out or they'll have to log out or yeah. whatever. You'll get separated in some way and you make a friend. Right. Yeah. And I just I always say I thought it'd be cool if you could like I don't know, shake someone's hand or give them a, a hug or something yeah. to have that little personal touch to the game. Oh, that's cool. Because you do you do you do make a lot of friends along the way, you know. Yeah. Um, sometimes a lot of enemies too, but you do <laughs> you do meet nice people. So yeah. I always said I I think about three or four years ago I mentioned that to one of the dev development team. Yeah. Oh, cool. And actually, you know, you're that that's really true. Like if you're playing a ra- a game, you interact with some stranger for the last four or five hours, yeah, that's that would be a nice way to end things off. Yeah. Because everybody just puts their hands up and tries to do high fives <laughs> and looks really ridiculous. <laughs> oh. And now what is you know, what is their what are a couple of things that you find annoying with the game or would, you know, they could just remove or change? Uh, the recent, there's been a couple of updates recently with adding some grenade launchers and like uh, explosives and stuff. Yeah. I don't feel that they belong in Daisy. I mean, there's a place for them, but I feel like it's in the modded community. Yeah. Um, I don't think they should be in the, the vanilla game. Yeah. Oh. Uh, in my opinion. Because I feel like it leads towards a bit more of like an armor style, and I feel like Daisy Standalone has taken its own path yeah. of a more hardcore gritty survival than like a simulation. If you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, I would I would like that, and the gas, the gas zones as well. I'm not not a huge fan. I mean, I've never gone in one. I can't be asked to go find all the stuff to get inside one. To be honest with you, it's a lot of kerfuffle. <laughs> now, what is the gas zone for those that like myself who? Have no so it's. Idea? It's got two places where it stays constantly. Okay. Um, and you go into it and you need to full like hazmat suit to get into it basically. Oh, wow. Like full like gas mask, body, gloves, the whole lot. Otherwise you die. You get gas poisoning and you just start vomiting and then oh, you die. Sure. Basically. So, <laughs> uh, but to inside of it, there's lots of high tier loot. So you can get lots of really cool stuff. But it's obviously the effort that you go to put on find all the gear yeah. at like certain spots around the map. And then you've obviously got to go and go to the gas zone and everything so a lot of people put have like you know they play 12 or 13 hours a day or whatever they're gonna put the time in but you know yeah. me i only play maybe three or four hour sessions 
it's not really worth it. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of investment um, to put into it. So now that brings me up to another question. So, you you know, you've played that session, you're logging off. What is that, you know, what is the sort of you log off and you come back to that same server and you pick up where you left off? It depends because um, like sometimes I'll go like on Monday, for example, if I was playing solo and Tuesday I've got a team up and then my friend's like, oh, can we play on this server? I'll be like, oh, well, okay. I've got a fully geared guy. You want to be on the coast and I will just, you know, F11 my character and, and, and start again. Yeah. Um, but I do still have like uh, other characters that I will carry on if I'm really invested in them. Yeah. For example, um, you know, so it really depends on the day, I guess. Yeah. And now when you die, though, that's it. You get basically oh. start fresh from there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, you, you lost everything. And yeah. yeah. And how, how long have you had one character survive for? The longest I've had a character was four months, but that was years ago. Oh we're talking Lord. like we're talking like maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, and he went through some stuff like he went to death like so like it's almost death like so many times you know like yeah so they bring him back again like three or four times during that time and then he eventually met his demise but um yeah the longest yeah, it was four months it was really cool and when he met his demise were you like oh my god were you like or i was you... gutted yeah. i was gutted for about three months I think. <laughs> oh, <no way. laughs> it was really sad oh. but yeah yeah you do get invested though um and that's like the hardest part about days is letting go of that fear yeah. of dying uh, and i ha i haven't after nine years a lot of people have a lot of people can play it and be like oh you know it's like they, they don't get the same adrenaline that they used to when they first started playing yeah i still get that like i my, my desk is always shaking when i'm in a firefight situation yeah uh, yeah i don't think it'll ever change for me i oh. think it just has that has that effect on me so. yeah oh my lord so Somebody who's jumping into the game for the first time, what areas should they go towards on the map or what areas should they avoid? I've heard like, you know, stay away from military installations because it's, you know, chads are camped around waiting to kill people. Depends really, because each server is different. Mm -hmm. So you'll find like certain servers have different hotspots um, and like different places that you would feel more safer than others. Yeah. Um, like Northwest Airfield, which is the big airfield. Uh, it used to be quite a threat to go there. Like you said, if you'd go there, you would be feel like a little bit freaked out. But because it's so big now, they updated it not so long ago, yeah. and it's now really, really big. I've been there like several times in the in the recent months and not seen a soul. Yeah. Um. So that I don't think is so much of a threat anymore. I think you've got the smaller military bases that people tend to go to nowadays that are more okay. of a threat, um, like Kamex military base, which is above Sverigrad. Um. And a few of the other little ones down by the coast, Belotta and things like that. So, yeah. yeah, in the back in the olden days, the Northwest Airfield was like crazy. You wouldn't want to go there if you wanted to. If you wanted to firefight, you'd go there. But if yeah. you didn't want to fight, you'd stay the hell away because it was chaos. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't find that uh, maybe not on the servers that I play on anyway. That okay. that's really such a big deal anymore. All right. And now, over the years you've been playing the game, what are a couple of moments that really stood out for you? Like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened, and you know with my character or this, you know, something This was like, oh, wow. Oh, God. There's, there's, so, there's so many stories. And I think the hardest thing about, because I've been playing it for so long, some of the stories kind of meld in yeah. my mind. So, like, um, but there's a few, there's a few that stick out. I mean, I've had a, I was talking about this the other day, actually, it was, a, it was around Halloween time and I was strolling through, um, I think it was um, Kamishovo as a freshborn. And there's a guy in a house and the house is dark and he's wearing this clown mask. <laughs> Oh my and he's God. got a glow. He's got a glow stick, and he's like, you know, starts talking to me, and he convinces me to come inside, <laughs> and then he takes me hostage, and it was absolutely terrifying. And I like, I don't like clowns. I don't like anything <laughs> scary. I'm a big wimp, so I'm sat there like shaking and shivering, and you know, absolutely terrified. And then eventually, he just killed himself in front of me. It was the bizarrest oh and God. weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. All right, so but you it. Oh my yeah. god. So you just did yeah. the classic horror movie thing. You went into a house where there's a yeah. guy with a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then he just suicided and I'm just kind of stood there like what just happened? Like I don't even know. Oh my lord. It was it, yeah, very bizarre. You do get some like I said weird and wonderful things. You never know <laughs> what is going to happen in Daisy. Yeah. Um, and now, so you were bound. How, what happens in those moments? So he killed himself. Are you like, did he untie you before he killed himself? Or no, you can struggle out of it. Okay. You, you see, you can struggle out of like um, rope and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, but like obviously they can see you doing that. So obviously you can't if you're in a hostage situation yeah. and you try to do it. They're probably going to blow your brains out. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah, so that that definitely sticks in my memory as one of the the weird and wonderful moments of Daisy. Yeah. Did you have nightmares after that? Because that's just crazy. Yeah, I think I did one <laughs> once or twice. Yeah, definitely. Oh my lord. So now, what? Um, who do you roll with mainly? Who's in your crew? Do you have a normal bunch of people you uh, roll with? Yeah, I have like a circle, I guess. So yeah. I'm in a stream team called the Survivors. So mm -hmm. I play regularly with a few of those. I have two weekly team ups um, with two ladies, uh, really good friends of mine, yeah. uh, Joito and Poetry Slam. And then, like I, you know, I occasionally arrange things. It's really hard for me because of the ch the children. Yes. Um, so my team ups are usually very short and sweet. Um, yeah, they don't happen as as often as they used to, unfortunately, yeah. since my second kid came along. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, so. Oh, how did the, uh, I saw you tweeted about the first day of nursery school for one. How really, did it go? Really, yeah, really good. She, she was fine. Yeah. It was me that was upset. She didn't care. She was like just straight in there See in the I'm toys, going. not even bothered. No, she's been, she's done really well. Oh, good. So that was good. Excellent. All right. So Queens of the Castle. So how I found you was I was, uh, you know, so my pod has been focused on really the Tarkov community. Yeah. Eventually branched out, had some Fortnite people come on and it's like, you know what, Daisy, there's gotta be some cool people out there. And I ended up coming across, uh, Amish Zed, I think that was, and then he was casting your event, the Queen. Yeah. Zed, and I was like, Oh my God, what a great concept. So that's how I ended up finding you. And then that's how you got here. Yeah, um, Queens of the Castle really escalated from the weirdest thing. It was um, we were talking uh, with a friend of mine about how many ladies are in the Daisy community now, and really like we were just like we can't believe it because me and my friend Joe, jo, who I play with weekly, uh, she's been around as long as I have in the yeah. Daisy community. So she, we've kind of seen it and grown together. If you know yeah. what I mean, that's why we're so close. Um, and we were like, it's mental. There's like 60, 70 women that we know of. There could be more out there. Yeah. I was like, maybe we should do an open server. So that was how it how it started. And then a couple of days went by and I was discussing it with a few people. And somebody said to me, King of the Hill. And it just like it was like a light bulb moment. I went, Queens of the Castle. And that was it. And then yeah. it would just it just became this thing. And we had our first event in February of the like, this year. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the second one obviously a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, it's it's weird because it, I never wanted it to be anything like that. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like yeah. it was planned to be some crazy big thing. It was just, it was just a small idea that became a big idea that then just blew blew out of the water. The first one was absolutely insane. Uh, I couldn't quite believe how how good it went. Yeah. it was it was you know I was on a high for like three weeks. I think <laughs> I still am now from number two. Yeah. So you know. So now, our first, so let's take a step back. What is King of the Hill? First of all. It's a, a mode in armor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically like a bit like capture the flag type yeah. type thing, you know. Um, so when I obviously heard that, I was like, women, queens, and then obviously I know there's a lot of castles in Daisy, so yeah. it just kind of yeah. Um, um, and now, how did you put it together? What was the the basis of it? I kind of just winged it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like a, a very good organized person. Yeah. So I'm probably not the best person to organize anything, especially an event. Uh, somehow I did it. But um, so I kind of just uh, went to, we had a ladies discord. Um, so I kind of pitched the idea to them and yeah. like got interest and see who was interested. And then obviously had to find someone to host it. So mm -hmm. the first one was hosted by a guy called Happy Bombs. He has a, a few on of his own servers. Yeah. Um, he hosted the first one for me. And I was like, I didn't really know what I wanted, to be honest. He was like, asking me all these questions about character. And I'm like, I actually don't even know. Give me a while. Let me think about this. Because it, it all just kind of snowballed within like a week. Yeah. It was, you know, something completely different to what we had originally spoke about. And then, and then, like I said, then it just, um, yeah, then within about maybe a week and a half, all the details were nailed down. A date was picked. And, yeah. and we were good to go. So... And then it was just a case of running around getting everyone's Steam IDs and names and, yeah. you know, making the teams and the graphics and, and just kind of getting it out there and getting people interested. And then finding, obviously, I found um, some hosts for it. Yeah. Um, Amish said, I've known Amish for a good, a good couple of years now um, in the community. Yeah. And uh, he's just a really funny guy. So I just thought, he'd, I like, I want, like yeah, people were saying, why didn't you get women to do it? I was like, I wanted all the women to play. Right. That was the idea, right? Like, so... I couldn't get like um, women to host it as well, and I wanted people that I knew would be really good at. And Amish just absolutely he he nailed it. Like yeah. he you know he's really really good at it. 
Uh, he should be like a sports broadcaster yeah. or something. Um, and well, then uh, he suggested uh, Doc, Doc Dreist, and, and Doc also did an incredible job with the first one. And I haven't actually watched, I feel embarrassed to say this, but I've not watched any of the footage back. Honestly, I haven't. I haven't seen anybody's bods <laughs> or anybody's um, casting or nothing since the event. Oh, Lord. So... I can't say how it went, but I'm sure they did an incredible job because yeah. they're both amazing people. So, and then when, this year we included uh, another guy as well because I thought with more players, we'd need an extra an extra yeah. caster. So I chose a guy called uh, I'm Mr. Rectangle, um, who is hilarious. Uh, he when he streams, I think he's absolutely brilliant. So I thought he'd do it incredible as well. And he's got really good chemistry with Armish. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was oh cool. That was kind of how it all went together. And now, what has you know, from the first one to the second one, what was sort of the things that you've learned from the first one that helped pull the second one off? I think the first one just went really well. That I kind of copied everything really. Yeah. To be honest, it was it. There wasn't any major issues. The only issue we had this time around was that Happy Bombs is a very busy man and he yeah. couldn't host it this time for me. So I had to find find someone else to do it. So we just had a different server. Um, but I didn't really change a lot. But there was a few changes because Daisy had changed. Mm -hmm. So there was things in it that weren't in the first first one, uh, like claymores um, and explosives and stuff. We didn't yeah. have trip wires or anything like that in the last time. Um, I think it was still an experimental patch at the yeah. time when when we did the event. So um, I won't have those in again. <laughs> we learn we learn our lesson. Yeah, I think I think six or seven women were taken out by a, a mine or something. So. Um, you know, almost a whole team. It was, uh, yeah. So I think we learned a lesson with that one. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think everything else kind of works. I yeah. don't think there's there's too much to really tweak with it. But I do next time would like to host it myself. Yeah. Because I do find it's a lot of stress when you're taking part in something, but there's problems happening and you're kind of trying to deal with everything. And also yeah. I was streaming, so I had my chat talking to me. Oh, God. Um. So it was a little bit chaotic this time around because yeah. the first time we didn't really have any any performance issues or anything, but we had it on a smaller scale. There was only 45 players last time. Yeah. There were 60 players this time. So um, the server obviously couldn't handle it very well and right. uh, we had a few a few problems. But um, So I think next time, I think my plan is to try and learn how to do all this stuff myself Yeah. and broadcast it myself. Mm -hmm. Um. It's going to be interesting because I'm not really a tech. I'm not good with technology. Yeah. Um, my computer, and you know, I can do the updates and build it, but that's about it. Like when it comes <laughs> to any anything a bit more complicated, so um, that's the plan for the next six or seven months is to get learning and, yeah. and try and you know do it myself and and see what happens. Oh, cool. Now, Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this pod, I'm sure we'll hope you know get a whole bunch of people willing to help. This is it sounds amazing. What was the hardest thing about pulling the first one off and the second one off? Just the coordination, getting like you said, getting everybody just ideas. getting everybody together. Yeah, because it's a lot of people, and you've got you know they've all got their own lives and things going right. on, so it's hard to pull. You know, I mean, it was like 48 people last time, and like 65 people this time. You know, with the pod, the broadcasters and all the admin and stuff. You know, yeah. So it's a lot of people to get all together in one place and, you know, make sure everybody's got what they need as well. Because we had issues with people not having, um, like, uh, whitelisting to get into the server. So there yeah. was that to deal with. And then it's like, it's okay for one or two, but I had, like, 12 people messaging me going, I can't get in. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. You know, two minutes before it's due to begin. So, uh, yeah, it's just really getting everyone all together in one place with something as big as, as, big as that. And I, I'm lucky because I don't have to do any of the server side stuff. Yeah. I'm very lucky that I have I know good people that do those kind of things. They get like the server ready and they, you know, put the mods on that I wanted and, you know, yeah. got the girls the equipment that they needed and gave them their gear and teleported them and stuff. So I'm lucky that there's a lot of background people as well. Cause yeah. I I mainly am like an admin, really. I'm just putting right. people's names in a file and, you know, getting them getting them to be at a certain place at a certain time. I didn't do any of the legwork. I can't take any of the credit <laughs> on either of them. Um you know, I have a, a great community around me that helps yeah. me with all these things. So, um, and lots and lots of people that were really amazing and pulled it off with me. So, oh, very cool. Well, actually, I am so glad we talked because I may have somebody who you should meet. Her name is Sigma. And okay. she runs uh, a group called Evasion for the Escape from Tarkov community. And she, it's a huge tournament thing that she does. She runs all these tournaments for uh, Tarkov. And yeah. she's got a whole ecosystem built in with a whole bunch of people that work with her to pull off these tournaments and whatnot. 
the yeah. back end stuff, the production value is fantastic. But just to, I, I will introduce you guys too, and you guys just maybe bounce that'd be really cool. Ideas. Yeah, Thank you. no Thank problem. You. Yeah, no, the whole concept sounds amazing. So now, when three happens, do you have a time frame when you're going to to aim to to do that one next year at some point? Yeah. I haven't. Yeah, I like I said, I want to to learn stuff and do do it a bit different next time. So. And I need to give myself time because I, I don't really have a lot of spare time, yeah. you know, with the children and everything. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't say to be confirmed. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing you could, you know, possibly look at, you know, getting some sponsors or something to help because, you know, you've got a great. Well, that on. yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, in fact, Daisy did Daisy themselves uh, after the first one. They approached me and they wanted to sponsor sponsor the event. Oh, wow. Um. I felt really heartbroken because I love the development team with all my heart. Obviously, I support the game wholeheartedly. Yeah. It's like my biggest passion in life at the minute. Um, so when they were like, you want to work with us? I was like, I would love to. And then they decided they wanted me to do it on Livonia. Oh. And obviously, and that was where I was like, I would give you guys my whole world, <laughs> but I would not give you that. And I'm so sorry. And yeah. I can't do it. Um, I said it, it just wouldn't be Queens of the Castle. Yeah. And I just couldn't. Um, so that I, it was heartbreaking for me because I really was really excited about that, yeah. you know, that opportunity and everything. And I was uh, really quite good that I had to turn it down, but I just knew it wasn't right for the yeah. event. Um, no matter how much, like, I know it would have given me a lot of exposure on it, of course. And, yeah. and the girl, the girls that they offered to um, give all the girls that participated a copy of the game. Oh, wow. Um, you know, the, the DLC, Livonia. Yeah. So it, it would have been good for them too, but it was at the same time. I was it's like, ready yet. Yeah. I need to, it's, yeah, I need to look out for what I've, feel is queens of the castle and that and livonia just wasn't it for me so no makes um, sense so yeah more sponsors would be cool too <laughs> and now how would you describe the daisy community first of all because you've been in it for so long now you know you've been streaming the game playing the game for many years how would you describe us uh, let's, let's actually how would you describe it back then to compare it to where it's today because like you said you know back then there weren't as many females in it but today it seems like it's you know exploded yeah it still kept that same unique tightness that it has. Like we were all like a big family. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, it, even as it's grown, it still feels like that. Because um, back then you knew everybody and you kind of, you know, everybody knew everybody. So and yeah. even now, I mean, I don't know everybody, but it still has that kind of feel to it. Like even with the people that are new and that have come in and it's just an incredible community. I mean, the, the things that they've done for, for my friends and my family and, yeah. you know, all sorts of things that they've done over the years that are absolutely incredible. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Second e to none. <laughs> Excellent. So now, actually, so you get to pick, if you could pick t three other people, anybody out there, you say their name, they're running a an adventure with you in Daisy. Who would you like to do that with? Like people in the community? Anybody. anybody or anybody. Oh, God, Daisy. anybody. Yeah, you, you know, any oh. of the content creators, past or present, that, you know, have played oh, the game. Oh, God. Well, Mr. Moon is like a, a like a I don't know if you know Mr. Moon is no. like an old school Daisy content creator. That yeah. would be like a dream because he he doesn't really create Daisy content anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then oh god, there's a, a girl called Kiwo. She was old school as well. Yeah. That would have been really good. Yeah. And um, well, th only three. God, that's hard. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Damn it, there's too many to choose from. Oh, what about Frankie? You? Okay. Frankie on PC. There, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's talk streaming for a little bit. So you, you yep. started streaming, would you say it was Skyrim was the first game you streamed? Yeah, it was a mixture of Skyrim and, and GTA I used to play yeah. when I first started out, yeah. And what made you decide to, hey, you know what, let's go live? Well, I was um I was kind of a bit lonely really, because I just moved to uh, Scotland yeah. uh, at the time. This was before children and, 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 you know, marriage and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And uh, my partner had stayed here back in England. So I was working uh, all day, every day, and then coming home to the yeah. flat and being kind of like, well, what do I do now? Um, and then I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll try this for a bit. And I started doing it. And then um, we moved and the internet was really bad. So I stopped for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then my son was born and so on and so forth. And then we started it back up again. Because I really enjoyed it when I did it for that very short time. I only maybe did like 25 hours of streaming or something yeah. in that first like little block of streaming that I did. 
And I thought, this is kind of cool. Like, I'd, I'd made a few moderators and I'd met a few cool people. And, you know, and I was like, I really like the vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and it was when um, I started getting back into Daisy again. And I was like, oh, I was watching The Running Man's. And I was like, he seems to be having a lot of fun as well. You know, maybe I should should start try this again, you know. Uh, being a stay-at-home parent, I had a bit of spare time in my hands when they're, yeah. they're only little and they sleep all the time, you know. So, uh -huh. <laughs> a long, long time ago. Don't have yeah. that, that time anymore, but... Um, yeah, so. Oh. And now, what do you, like, back then, do you still remember your first subs or your first mods? I do, and I still have some of them. Oh, wow. Which is, which is crazy cool. Um, yeah, one of my moderators, uh, Neil's been with me since day, day one, pretty much. Oh, my lord. Um, I think he's, his, his follow things, like, five years, nine months and something, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, that's, so. That's amazing. And now what's, in your opinion, what's the hardest thing about being a content creator, being stream, you know, being a streamer? I think uh, it's not judging yourself too much and not comparing yourself to other streamers is the hardest yeah. thing, I think. I think everyone's guilty of it as a content creator. You know, you look at someone else's else's numbers and everyone else, what everyone else is doing, and you're like, oh, well, maybe I'm really bad at this. And <laughs> But I think you can't do that as a content creator. You have to just, you know... Um, just ignore all the the numbers and all the the, the you know the comments and all yeah. the everything else that people are saying because otherwise I think you'll just talk yourself out of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I think it's one of the hardest things I've done where you can be really critical of yourself. Yeah. Over like silly things like you know uh, like one day you'll have a bad stream and maybe nobody will come and you'll be like oh well maybe I should just give this up. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm not very good at it but uh, yeah so um, yeah like, I think that's one of the hardest things about being a content creator. Like you could be your own worst enemy, essentially. Exactly, you yeah. are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing about if, you, especially if you're trying to do it like as a career. I suppose mm -hmm. like a lot of people try to do it full time and stuff and make it their, you know, their job or whatever. Yeah, I think it's like I've never had a job where the pressure is the same. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. To, to to perform, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, so. Well, and then yeah. I've heard that from a bunch of people. Like I've had Devil Dog Gamer on, who's a big, you know, he's a big first-person shooter streamer and and content creator, and he's he describes like the pressure and just the anxiety he's gotten or he's had over the years doesn't even compare. And he's been in, you know, he's fought over in Afghanistan and whatnot. He's like, it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's definitely one of the hardest the hardest things I've noticed over because I did full time for a little while. Yeah. And I crumbled under the pressure. I couldn't take it. I was like, it's too much. Yeah. Um, so I took I took a quite a bit of a break for a while there, you know, and, and just kind of went really, really part time. But yeah. I've sort of come back to it now because it was like I could take the take the pressure of like worrying about having to, to you know, make a certain amount a day so that like yeah. the bills are paid, you know, like, right. and it's like, well, I want to, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I don't want to feel this, that pressure of yeah, that's of those it. kind of things. Um, and then you bring, up, you bring up a good point about, you know, you, when you're streaming, you want to be happy. You don't want to put on a fake face and people aren't no. going to come and watch you if you're not, you're not enjoying yourself. Exactly. And I, I got, did get to a point where I wasn't. So I, so I did like stop, like for I think about six weeks, I took a break from Daisy yeah. and I went down like to just doing a, a few little silly single player games for, you know, random nights a week and stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, now I've sort of come back to it again. <laughs> You're all refreshed, ready to go. <laughs> You're all refreshed. Well, that was last year. So, but then it's obviously been a bit crazy around here lately. So yes. the streaming hasn't been as, uh, as prominent. Yeah. And now looking, looking back over the years, what's been the streaming highlight? You know, a certain raid happened or your, did you get Twitch partner? What would you describe some of your, your streaming highlights? I think probably teaming up with some of my idols, I guess, yeah. like, you know, because obviously I've been around a really long time. So my name is quite well known mm -hmm. in the community and maybe not so much anymore, um, <laughs> but it, you know, I, um, through like word of mouth and stuff. So I've had some really, really cool teammates with some really, what you would call, I suppose, big names in the yeah. Daisy community. Um, and to me, like idols, like I remember the first time I played with the running man, I was like a giddy child. <laughs> I was honestly, and I think like my title was like dreams can come true or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, cause it was, cause now like I consider the guy a friend because I've known him what six or seven years. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, just playing with some some people that I like look up to and you know whose content I admire. Um, yeah. that's definitely some of the biggest highlights of becoming you know a content creator. Yeah, and now are you partnered with Twitch or chasing? No. Them? Yeah. Uh, whining after it, I think you could probably say at this point. <laughs> um, 
it's yeah it's been a rough i've been close so many times oh, it's no. unreal but like i said my schedule is so fra- like erratic because yeah. of like i say because I, my it's main priority is my kids is Absolutely. so um content creation will always come second yeah. for that so uh some weeks i can you know probably put like maybe two streams out some weeks i put out like five streams it just yeah. You know, so it, the numbers always get really close and they just kind of drop and it's, you know, it's a game that I've been playing for well, a very long time. But maybe one day, one day you, know, you yes. never know. Absolutely. You never know. Well, right now, as matters, you're enjoying yourself. That's that's exactly. most important. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And now what advice would you give to somebody who's hitting that go live button for the first time? Just enjoy yourself and the rest will follow. Yeah. Excellent. Because if you're not enjoying yourself, then no one's going to want to stick around. Yeah. And always talk, always talk, never stop talking. If you just don't stop talking, then when they come in, they're not going to be like, oh, why is it so silent? And then they'll leave because no one's saying anything. I sound like a crazy lady when I stream because I don't <laughs> stop talking about and everything. Um, but I feel like that keeps people in the chat yeah. and people interested. Yeah. Very cool. Now, over the years, have has have you been rated by any large group of people or large streamers or anything like that? The, Biggest raid I've ever had was probably the Running Man was yeah. like four thousand people or something crazy. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, even now he still does that from time to time, which I always find absolutely insane. You know, it still blows me away, even though it's like the thirtieth time he's done it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest in, the, in over the years. The reason I ask that because I always love to get your impressions and experiences. Like when you go from X to triple X. All of a sudden, you know, somebody took their house party to your place. How, how do you, you know, how do you deal with chat when it goes from that? And, and... well, I think it comes with like ex- like time, like mm-hmm. experience, I suppose. Because like I used to get like really like I almost have an anxiety attack, like holy <laughs> shit, this is like really happening. <laughs> but I think like it's almost you, you, yeah, you don't kind of take it like that after a while. Like yeah. I, I, it's impressive still, but the reaction, I suppose, you're a lot more calmer about it. Yeah. You know, I don't freak out anymore, whereas, like, the, the first few times it happened, I was freaking out. Um, yeah, I, I don't freak out so much anymore. But I'm also internally grateful every time I get to one of those because they are incredible. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, like, stop speaking and have panic attacks anymore. You know, that doesn't happen. <laughs> How was What was that first big raid like? You, you just, there's no words for it, I don't think, when, especially because I'm not like a big streamer. Like, I average maybe 50 viewers nowadays. Like, back then, I was averaging maybe 15 or 20. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you get like, and I say, like, I think the first ever big raid I got was like 900 people. And I was just like, holy, you know, um, <laughs> what do you say? And then, like, your chat's just moving yeah. and, you know, you can't keep up. And I think I got raided once by a streamer. I think it was the Loyal Patriot. He broke my chat. Like, he broke everything. Like, the follows just kept coming and coming and coming. And this was when I was maybe, like, I had maybe an average of five viewers or something, and it was, like, a 300-person raid or something. Oh, and my, like, or, you know, my Streamlabs or whatever just gave up. It just stopped working, and, and you know, he, he broke it. It was crazy. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, that was – I remember that very well. That was that was mental. <laughs> So I saw you tweeted a little while ago, you're part of a new team. I am. So when, uh, obviously, the creation of the Queens of the Castle has really hyped up the ladies' discord because Mm -hmm. uh, that was where I was bringing women to come and, you know, sign up and and discuss the the event and stuff, as well as, obviously, uh, the the admin and everybody else spreading word about it. So it's become quite a big place now. So there's things that have spun off from it. So the ladies' stream team and a ladies' server as well. Uh, which have been created by two different people. So, Excellent. yeah, it's really, really quite cool. And now, how would you describe the team? It's, it's females only? Females only, yeah. yeah. We're, they're all just, like, I don't know, people have this vision of women when they're getting groups to be really bitchy, but this is just like a wholesome, we got each other's back, you know, we're here yeah. for you kind of place. It's not anything like that. I think um, there's quite a, what's the word, stereotypical kind of view Yeah. on, on a bunch of women, you know, getting together. <laughs> Um, but honestly, we all just love each other and we're, we, we, you know, we're here to, to raise each other up and that's all it's about. Um, you know, yeah. Um, over in the Tarkov community, there's a, another streamer, her name is Nixia and she started up a ladies only, not a team, but more of a discord called the chat. Yeah. And it's really for, like you said, it's, it's not that bitchy thing that like stereotypical, it's more of a support, you know, if somebody, some weird person starts in one chat 
uh, immediately everybody in the you know that crew knows about it, and it's just important yeah. for them to you know just to chat, you know, vent and things like that. Yeah, what we're all here for, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so now, actually, it brings me to another point. Like, as a female streamer, how's your experience been from since you started six years ago to today on Twitch? I mean, it's it's always a rocky road in when you've got prejudice in the world. Like yeah. you know, it's just it's it it is, but. I, do, I don't let it bother me. Uh, I'm very much like, if I get a dickhead in my, sorry, excuse my language, I get a dickhead in hey, my this chat. Is, this then... is your pod. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> okay, it's well, good. I swear a lot, so I've been trying to be good. No, let it um, out. Um, <laughs> if I get a dickhead in my chat, I will call him a dickhead and I will ban him. You know, like, yeah. I don't really take a lot of shit when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm actually, there's a clip on my Twitch that's probably got about the a thousand views or something where a guy comes up to me in the game and he starts being a sexist pig and I knock him the shit out with the shovel because I'm like you don't talk to women like that <laughs> like, you know um because I don't really take it and uh, I'll give as good as I get really yeah. I am quite mouthy uh, when I when I want to be so um so yeah I don't it's like water off a duck's back for me yeah. um you know and I do what I can to like uh report and you know whatever yeah. if things get out of hand and you know we have like that new sharing ban thing with twitch which is quite recently oh, cool. put in so you can share with commu other communities that your ban list and stuff or, or if, it's, if someone's like you know been banned you can have them as come up as a warning in your channel so yeah. you can deal with the sexist people that come along yeah um, but yeah i don't don't really find it so much with the streaming it's more in the game that i get the harassment oh, okay um like once they find like, out you're a female, they... once they hear my voice, they're like, "Oh, you're a bitch." This, you know, they're just oh. typical, you know, just insults. And um, you know, I've had uh, moments where like someone's like, "Oh, I'll carry you because you're a girl. You're gonna need the help." I'm like, oh, oh, "Fuck <laughs> up! I can handle myself." You know, like wow. fuck yourself. So, uh, you know, you do get a daisy can be like that sometimes, but you just because, like I say, you don't know who you're going to run into. But right. that's it. with any video game, you could run into someone who's going to be an idiot. So. Yeah, that's true. There's idiots um, everywhere you go. Oh, yeah, no, it's that is true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and yeah, video games are you know more, more so because of the uh, you know how anonymous it can be. Yeah, I think it has changed though. Like since I started streaming and stuff, yeah. like I found that it was a lot more of that stuff kind of happened. Yeah, I think as time has gone on, like you know, times are changing, so it's not so shocking now that there's a girl playing a video game right. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. it, was more, it was it was really weird for a while there. It seemed kind of taboo that I was a girl and I was <laughs> playing video games. It was like, you know, how could you do that? And I, well, I've been doing it since I was like five, but okay. Yeah. You know, um, so, but yeah, it's not, it's, it's not as bad. I don't think you see it as often now. And yeah. I think, um, yeah, it's definitely more, I think the ratio of men to women gamers is a bit more on par than it used to be. Yeah. Because it was very much mainly male dominated industry. Yeah. Um, I think it's come a long way from that. And some people described, you know, years ago on Twitch, it was like the wild, wild west. And today you've got better tools to help too as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There is a lot of more, more things that you yeah. can do to keep them at bay. <laughs> And now you just, you know, another thing that you just reminded me or sparked me to ask you about is your friends or your parents or whatnot, you know, that knowing that you stream, what do they like, who watches video games? Who watches people play video games? My mom says it's not a real job. <laughs> 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 but I'm like, well, I was paying my bills, so yeah. it kind of is. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Some people look at you like you're an absolute like weirdo when you yeah. tell them what you do. Um, and some people look are uh, just fascinated. They want to know more, you know. Uh, I don't yeah. understand. Like, tell it, explain it to me, you know. I want to know more. Can I do it, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, that's always a very common question when I meet new people is, mm -hmm. is how do I do it? I want to do this. Like, like, you know, what do I need? And I'm like, it's years of dedication and time. Yeah. That's the main thing you need. Um, yeah. And it's more than just going, it's more than just playing a video game that people it I is. don't think understand. No, no, no one, no one, I don't think anyone does really understand that. I try and explain it to people and they're just kind of like, but you are just, I'm like, not just playing games or am I? Like, I'm, I'm entertaining however many people are sat here. Right. You know, and you try to make it interesting too. Like, you're not going to want to watch you run through a forest for four hours and do absolutely nothing, are yeah. they? That's, I mean, people do actually watch me do that a lot <laughs> for some reason, but, you know, uh, you've got to try and make it entertaining as well. Um, 
Yeah. So. Yeah. And trying to relate that with your IRL friends who, you know, some of the frustrations you run into. So it's nice that you have your community or other peers that you can yeah. vent to and whatnot. Yeah. Cause I will go around my best friend's house and start telling her a story about how I got into a firefight in a fire station. And she's just kind of looking at me like, I couldn't really care less about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so now what other content creators do you, do you watch or any people should check, uh, or are there, is there anyone flying under the radar that people should, you know, check oh. out? Uh, yeah, I, I mainly watch, um, if I'm, I don't really watch a lot of Twitch. I used to, I used to literally Twitch was like my life. I never, never watched anything else. But when I sit down, if they're live, obviously, um, yeah. Amish said is, is cause I mod for him as well. Um, and Joey, so I think someone flying under the radar is poetry slam. One of my close friends. Um, she's just started playing Daisy. She's quite new to it, but she is funny as fuck. She yeah. is hilarious, and she, she plays Planet Coaster, which is another yeah. little niche game. Um, and yeah, she, she, I think she's going to do good things. I think she'll do really well for herself. Oh, cool. She's uh, she's she's growing fast, so yeah. I think she'll do great. Excellent. Yeah. So now, when you log off, you stop streaming. What happens? What do you do next? What's you know? What's your outside well, of the gaming world you know being a mom that's you know, of course that's yeah fun. so because i have my daughter has a really bad sleep schedule so my my actual evening plan goes i put my son to bed i come and stream i put my daughter to bed and then i go to bed so i, I have to finish at like a certain time at night so i can go put her to bed because she's a <laughs> night owl and she doesn't sleep oh no so so my i always end a stream and go i've got to run and go put the the second child to bed because she's a pain in the bottom but she's actually getting better with the going to nursery so hopefully that'll end soon and i can start streaming later yeah but yeah and then it's housework really exciting i'm really really not that fun honestly <laughs> um so yeah housework and uh potter around the house till probably 1 a.m and then and then hit the hay yeah uh, and i, I saw so. you, your son went fishing and sounds like you like to fish too I do love to fish. I don't really go anymore because of the, the children. Yeah. Um, I don't trust them around water just yet. He no. went for the first time on, on Sunday. He's only six. So, um, yeah, he had a really great time. But, yeah, I haven't been in, oh, God, about five years maybe. Yeah. But yeah, it's something I did with my dad when I was when I was younger, and it's something that I and I enjoy doing. So fly fishing um, oh, cool. and, yeah, bait fishing is – and that's why I like to do it in Daisy, I think, so much because <laughs> – because it's like, you know, I get my little bit of fishing in, um, even if it's just in the video. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right. Any plans for this year or next year? I know you said Queens of the Castle number three is going to come. Uh, anything yes. else? Any other goals you, you're you looking to try to do? Uh, really just get back into the streaming, to be honest. I really just want to get like a decent schedule. Now my daughter started school. I'm going to be doing the, the morning streams again. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just really kicking back into that because I want to... I'd like to to get it back to how I used to be. Where I had I was doing like f thirty hours a week. I was, yeah. I'm lucky to do three or four hours the last few months, so um, it would be nice to get back to that. So I'm just really focusing on streaming and trying not to do any events. I'm trying to keep myself like just bit, not so busy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big crazy busy. So just taking it easy and just playing some casual Daisy with chat open. So oh, good for you. All right. Well, hey, you survived the podcast. Hopefully it wasn't too painful. Yeah, no, it wasn't too painful. Excellent. But now, before you go, though, now I have to I ask this for everybody who comes on. They have to recommend or shout out some other peer or somebody else that they think that they would have a good story to come on the pod. Oh. Or somebody you don't like and you just say, you know, throw them <laughs> on the bus. Hmm. Loyal Patriot. Okay. I'm calling him out. There you go. Let's see if he stands up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, Ariana, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It was wonderful to meet yeah, you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.